The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explore and explain key features of texts and how they contribute to meaning. This lesson also links to learning outcome three, writing and presenting, an assessment standard that requires learners to decide on and effectively apply the appropriate style, point of view and format of text. Has your eye ever been drawn to a magazine by one of the articles listed on the cover? Titles of some of the articles are included on the cover to get potential readers interested so that they will pick up a magazine and hopefully buy it. Hi, I'm Kushu. Welcome to our next lesson on exploring magazines. Today, we are going to open up magazines and find out more about those articles that are listed on the cover. These main articles are known as feature articles and these are our focus for today's lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify feature articles, recognize the characteristics of a feature article and write your own feature article. So what exactly is a feature article and how is it different to other stories, articles, columns in a magazine? In our previous lesson, we looked at the contents page of various magazines. We saw that magazines have regular features such as a letter from the editor and letters from readers, reviews and fashion pages. But people wouldn't buy the same magazine month after month to just read the regular features. They expect each edition of the magazine to cover new topics and inform them about a range of issues. This is where the feature articles come in. To let readers know what the feature articles are in a magazine, their titles are often on the cover of a magazine and they are indicated on the contents page. We spoke to Lee Kasumba, editor of YMAG and Teddy Goma from Bona magazine about feature articles. What is a feature article? Okay, a feature article is, is like a, I would, I, you know, I was tempted to say a highlight point, but it's not really a highlight point because every piece should be a highlight point. You've got all your regular um, columns that will come through, right? Which should be written, should be, should be written in an amazing way anyhow. A feature article will go, will probably be what will introduce, in, with regards to YMAG, it will be what will introduce the concept for the magazine. So it'll be like a one-off event. For example, you know, the one issue of YMAG is going to have what happened with a lot of, you know, with the African youth that had inf interviewed Tony Blair. That's a feature article. It's not a regular piece. It's not, it doesn't come through regularly. Like uh, the black superheroes piece that's in the magazine, that's a feature article because it's not going to be there all the time. How do you decide on topics for your feature articles? We have a meeting. Uh, with the feature articles, uh, we then will either either one of you know either one of the main writers will write it, or we'll we'll commission somebody to write it, or it'll be through a piece that was emailed to feature. And there's no like there's no formula. It really just as long as it's working with the concept, we're fine. How is a feature article different from other articles in a magazine? Say. So Say a person give birth to quadruplets. This is not actually your, your, your daily thing. It doesn't happen daily. Yes, people give birth, but they don't uh, on a daily basis give uh, birth to quadruplets. So you would carry that because, uh, I mean, it's something unique, given the fact that probably you do not have any, there's no medical uh, 
in inducement, you know. So 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 you would you would you would carry such things right as a form of your reportage. Then you then do your your, your feature, where maybe you do a, a feature on your on on, on your celebrate may celebrate or a, a popular musician who has just won an award or whatever, right? Now that would actually, if you read it, that the, the one the one one story, it's actually fact driven. The, the quadruplet story. It's fact driven. It's full of fact. This person gave birth to this and that, and it's got 15 other kids, and that adds to. So, so, so that's the kind of thing, right? Whereas if you go to the, 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 the feature, it's more, more of uh, one the history behind the person, how you grew up. Because feature articles are longer articles, that contain a lot of information, the layout artists and the journalists have to think quite carefully about how to present this information. If the article just consisted of lots and lots of typing in columns, it would look boring and people may not want to read it. Also important information, such as contact details, would not stand out and they would be difficult for readers to find quickly. To see how these devices work, let's look at some feature articles in popular South African magazines. We'll begin by looking at the cover of Seventeen magazine. Can you spot the titles of the feature articles in this edition of the magazine? This issue has articles on Alexis Bledel tanning and virginity testing. Here's another title, I Felt Too Fat To Be Loved. By now, you'll realize that these are the titles of feature articles. These topics are not covered in each edition of Seventeen, but they are included here to show potential readers what is covered in this edition. Let's turn to the feature article entitled, I Felt Too Fat To Be Loved. Let's have a look at the headline, The Love Diet. The big font, bright pink lettering, and the photograph behind it would definitely make me want to read this article. A headline like this needs to give readers enough information about the article to make them want to read it, but it also shouldn't give the whole article away. From looking at this headline, what do you think the article is going to be about? I would guess that the article has something to do with losing weight and something to do with love. But to check if I'm right, I need to read the blurb under the headline. The blurb will give us a short description or introduction to the article. It's usually written under the headline in a font or lettering that is smaller than the headline but not as small as the article. In this case, the blurb reads, losing weight didn't get Miriam, 19, noticed by guys, but gaining something did. From the blurb, we can work out that the article is about a 19-year-old Miriam and what happened to her when she lost weight. We now have a pretty good idea what the article will be about and you would be able to decide whether or not to read the whole article. If we look at the text of the article, we see that different sections of the article have subheadings, fresh start, total transformation, and new confidence. These subheadings help to break the article up so it does not look like one continuous piece of writing. They also help indicate what the different sections of the article are about. Did you notice the sidebar? Here is a quote from a man named Aaron. He says, I never asked Miriam out because she didn't give any signs that she liked me, but I always thought she was pretty. The timing is bad for us now, but maybe things will work out in future. This sidebar includes extra information. The whole article is written by Miriam, 
But here we are given someone else's viewpoint. Breaking up the information like this also helps the article look interesting. And someone who has not read the main article may read this quote and then be keen to read the rest of the article. What does the senior features writer of Bona magazine, Teddy Gomba, have to say about the importance of headings and blurbs? I recently interviewed uh, the, well, he's now an ex-coach of Bloemfontein Celtic, Paul Tolleson. He's, he's quite actually a funny character watching him that is on the sidelines on, on, on the soccer pitch. And what actually came up is that this guy was actually uh, soccer crazy, you know, that he was mad about soccer. So, so for me, what then, after just reading the story and throughout the interview, which obviously comes out, I just decided, obviously, I mean, the, the, the whole thing is that uh, was to use uh, soccer mat, you know, as you know, because that's how he actually appeared to me, you know, throughout that, that 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 interview. As you can see, headings and blurbs are quite short, and are only decided on after the article has been written. This is because after the article is written, the writer has a much better idea of what aspect of the article he would like to focus on to attract readers. Here we have a four-page article from the Feminine magazine about abuse. The heading is Confessions of an Abuser and the blurb reads, a leopard never changes its spots. A man who beats his wife never stops. Or can he? Amanda Patterson meets a self-confessed abuser who is in recovery. This blurb is longer than the previous one, but it's still short enough to quickly scan over to see what the article is about. Now that you've read the blurb and the headline, let's see if you can answer these questions. What do you think the article will be about? What do you think the intention of the article is? The blurb tells us that the article is about a man who used to abuse his wife and is now in recovery. The intention of this article is to inform. It tells the story of a man who used to abuse his wife and its aim is to teach other men and women more about abuse. Because the intention of this article is to inform, it includes a lot of facts about abuse and even more information in an information box. This information box is entitled Our Shameful Record of Domestic Abuse. It lists statistics about abuse in South Africa. These abuse statistics are linked to the main story of the feature article in that they also deal with abuse between married couples. However, the main article is about a specific couple and their experience of abuse and the information box is about abuse in general in South Africa. In this case, the information box enables the journalist to include even more facts about abuse that may not have been fitted in the main part of the article. And by using a different colored background, the layout artist has ensured that this information box will stand out from the rest of the article. If we turn over the page, we see that this article also includes information in the form of a sidebar. This sidebar is entitled, Watch Out for Empty Promises. Gender studies expert Lisa Vetten warns that Bernard's story is the exception, not the rule. Like the information box, this sidebar looks different from the rest of the feature article. This indicates to readers that the information in it is related to the main article on abuse, but it explores it from another angle. In this case, the sidebar 
focuses on various studies of abusive men, not the couple who form the basis of the main article. This information is also provided by an expert, Lisa Vetten. So it is not written by the same person who wrote the rest of the article, Amanda Patterson. So like the information box, this sidebar provides information that relates to the article but is somewhat different. It stands out visually so that it can catch the reader's attention. The bottom of the next page contains a combination of an information box and contact lists entitled Tackling Abuse. This information box briefly tells the reader what abuse is and why abuse takes place. This would allow readers to identify if they are being abused. If a reader is being abused or knows someone who needs help with abuse, a contact list is provided. A contact list is a very important part of a feature article, especially when articles are about serious issues such as this one. It's no use simply reporting on issues such as abuse if people don't know where to go if they're also suffering. Again, the layout is important in helping to draw a reader's attention to this section. A bright colored background is used to show that this information is separate but related to the article and the picture encourages readers to look at this part of the article. We have learned a number of terms today that have to do with the feature article. We know that a headline is a short statement that often uses a catchy phrase to attract the reader to the article. A blurb is a short description or introduction to the article. Sidebar information covers a different aspect of the topic covered in the main article. It's made to look separate from the article. The information box includes facts or statistics directly or indirectly related to the article. Before we go, Here's a task for you to do based on what we've learned today. Today, you are going to do another task towards creating your own magazine. However, for this task, you will work on your own and not in your group. Keep in mind the type of magazine that you have begun to design and think of an article that you can write in your group's magazine. Decide on a topic for your feature article. Once you've done that, begin to do your research. Next, think of how you want to begin writing your article. For example, if your magazine is a health magazine and you want to write an article on the fix of TB in your community, you need to decide if you want to write about one specific family or about the entire community. Once you've decided how to approach the article, write a rough draft. Also add a sidebar, an information box and a contact list. Finally, think up a heading and write a blurb. That's all for today. See you next time when we'll be looking more closely at how to write a feature article. From me, Kushu, till next time.